going on, everybody? Welcome to the Big Dog Podcast. I'm Josh Wilson, and I got Jonathan Mack joining us in the studio per usual. How you doing? What's up? Nothing much. Yeah? I'm sweating in these headphones right now. I'm not going to lie. I, <laughs> my day's a little jacked up, so yeah. I came straight from the gym, which, oh, shoot, which in our office is right on the other side of the hallway. So it was lifting. It was on the tread. And like six minutes ago, I got off that thing and tried to cover the sweat in this hoodie. I don't know why I put on more <laughs> to come in here, but um, I can feel the. Yeah, it's the, a little bit of a hectic start to the morning. The dampness inside of my headphones right now. <laughs> that junk's gross. Hey, this is kind of a big deal for us amateurs. This is our 50th episode. So thank you, Jonathan. No problem. For sticking with us. I feel like we're um, getting, well, at least you're getting better. Like the production piece is getting better. I don't know that my content is getting better, but I know that you, sir, um, are doing a great job. And 50 episodes, that's cool. We talked about it like a month or so ago. Most podcasts don't what, get past four or something like that? Yeah, most stick at four and don't ever go over like two, maybe three hours of like total play time. Yeah. So it's That's a good wild. accomplishment. And there's a lot of podcasts that I know that talk about how they were a podcast for like five, six, seven years before they even had a uh, hundred listeners. So I'm happy that we get those consistent yeah. downloads. We're at, um, gosh, aren't we? Like, we're approached like 10,000 downloads. Yep. I mean, we went over eight like a month ago or whatever. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, the next big milestone will be 10,000. So I'm excited about that. Thank you to everybody who listens and shares the show and leaves reviews and, tags friends on social media like hey check this out really really appreciate it. it's been a lot of fun and and as you know for us whether there's five people listening or a million people listening we just want to help one person if one person can walk away with something of value out of obviously our hope is that we are able to impact more people than that with the message or you know you're you're able to be entertained catch a laugh or whatever um you know we want one person out of each episode it's worth our time. It's worth our effort, you know, to prioritize this and we're going to keep doing it. And we really appreciate the support. So cheers to 50, Jonathan water bottles in the air. There you go. Yes, sir. We can't say cheers without gulping. Yeah. There we go. Um, so 50 episodes in, that's pretty cool. So look, uh, message I want to talk about today. Uh, Man, as you guys know, I read a lot, listen to a lot of podcasts, interviews. I consume a lot of stuff, um, and I try to be very intentional about what I consume. We've talked about this before. You know, it plays into mindset. It doesn't mean every day I'm just, you know, all hyped up, fired up, motivated, all those things. We've been very, very transparent about that on this show. But I think about what my mindset would be like if I didn't pay attention to what I consumed, like where I would be at. And so one of the messages that, that I heard months and months ago, and I've really tried to replay in my mind, um, was along the lines of, you know, you're stronger than you think that you are. You are better looking than you think that you are. You're healthier than you think that you are. You, um, you know, you're, you're smarter than you think you are. You have more opportunity than you think that you do. And the, the thing that stuck to me with that is like, Right now in life, you may not feel that way. You may not feel that I'm stronger than the fears I have. You may not feel that you're healthier than you think that you are. You may not feel that you're better looking than you think that you are. But you are. You guys know this year I've been on this health process and and working out a lot and and getting this weight off and working towards that goal of July 1 being under 250, and I am chugging along. I've had majority really good days, and I've had some bad days, but I just keep going, and I'm tracking to, to get where I need to be. I'm healthier than I think that I am, but if I want to get to that healthy version of me, I've got to continue to do this work. So I am healthier than I think that I am, but there's a process you have to go through to get to it. You know, I'm I'm stronger than the fears and concerns that I have. You'll never know that though, until you start to attack the fears and fight the things that, 
that hold you back, that are, that are intimidating to you, that concern you. Um, I joke with my kids. I'm not the smart one. Your mama is. And yes, she, she is wiser than me. But when I say I'm not smart, I'm really putting myself down and playing it. I know for a fact I'm smarter than I think I am because I don't believe in luck. And I have to have some semblance of intelligence to be on the path that we're on. Because again, I don't believe in luck. Do I think I'm the smartest person in every room I go into? Good God, no. <laughs> I'm easily probably bottom thirds, but I am smarter than I give myself credit for. But it wasn't until the last several years where I started being very intentional about what I'm taking in that I can start to bring out that wisdom, right? Or these experiences now combined with, with other people's knowledge who are feeding into me and I'm paying attention to, these are the things that are creating me to be, quote unquote, smarter than I think that I am. The common part of it is, though, the work it takes to get you through it and the process that you have to go through. You know, when we think about... We talk a lot about mindset and, and visions and dreams that we have, whether personal, whether for our families, whether for our businesses. And for so many of us, they're really lofty. They're bold goals. Those things are terrifying. To have the strength to actually work towards and chase that dream, that vision, It takes a tremendous amount of strength. Just because you're scared doesn't mean that you're not strong. Just because you're nervous and fearful doesn't mean that you're weak or incapable. It probably means you have a little bit of common sense. It probably means that you're recognizing the risks. But the thing that I need you guys to hear today is I believe fully that every one of you that I have, Jonathan has, every one of you listening have, God has already put inside of you everything that you need to accomplish the vision, the dream, the goals that you have in your mind that have come to you. When these visions come to you for your life, I don't think that that's accidental. I think that it's like, hey, that this is where you can be at. I know where you're at right now. I know the things that you're going through. But this is what your life could look like. This is, this is what it could be. Those things don't happen by chance. We've talked in a previous episode about each one of us are unique, born perfect. And from perfect meaning like you're perfectly you, right? You're, you, you're uniquely you. You have your own unique skill sets and abilities and personality. There's nobody else like you. And because of that, your dreams and hopes and visions for your life while there may be some similarities, they're yours and yours alone. And I think that's God showing you just a glimpse of, hey, this is, this is where your life could go. This is what it could be. I don't believe he gives us those thoughts and those visions, and those ideas in the middle of the night when you wake up, your heart just beating like crazy, or you know, Jonathan, some you know, verses start to come to you you know, these are things that are inside of you because you're uniquely you. When I have a thought, a goal, a vision for my family, for the business, maybe for just me personally, how I see myself 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, I believe I have everything necessary to achieve all of those things. It's my job, though to take care of those resources and tools and develop them so that I can get there. It doesn't mean every problem that comes my way, I'm ready to solve, but it means I, at the base level, I have what I need to address it and take care of it and get me where I need to go. Now it's on me to live my life, do the work, take the steps necessary, approach my fears in the appropriate way, that can move me closer towards those things. Because everything I need, God has already given me. I just haven't got to the point in the path where it's going to come together yet. What I do know, though, 
is regardless of what's inside of you, regardless of what opportunities may lay ahead of you, if you stay where you're at, you don't work towards those things that make you nervous, cause hesitation and pause, you won't get any closer to achieving those things. You'll stay stagnant. And you'll say, well, you know, Josh, I don't even believe in God. I don't even, you know, I, I, I'm not into this religious stuff. Like, okay, and that's fine. For me, though, I just don't believe in the accidental. I don't believe in luck. I don't believe that, you know, I, I think about things that I think about in my life because I've seen somebody else with it. Like, I just, I don't, I don't care about things in that way. There's that feeling inside of you where the things that only you think about, the things that only you dream about, the things that only motivate you, and they get you feeling a sort of way. Like, these are, to me, I believe these are God's plans for my life. And so when I start to get a little lost, I typically will have more of these types of thoughts. And they're kind of guiding me. It's, a, it's that roadmap that I'm following. And that doesn't mean, again, everything's always easy and I'm always hyped up and motivated. You know, people will say, well, why, Josh, you went through this, you went through that. Where was God at in your life then? Why He wasn't showing up to help you then. And I come back to a story I've heard many times. In order to grow, you know, think about like a seed, right? Like if a seed's going to grow, what does it got to do first? It's got to get dirty. It's got to have a bunch of crap piled on top of it. It's got to go through some stuff. When a seed is planted in the ground, it's not just perfect scenario with that nice soft soil, perfect weather conditions, just the right amount of sunshine, just the right amount of water. And it just comes up through that nice, soft, beautiful topsoil and grows. Sure, there's a lot that do. But when you think about what do we talked about, sequoia trees on yep. here, and we talk about how they grow on these granite mountains and how the, 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 the root systems don't necessarily go deep. But what do they do, Jonathan? They go wide and grab each other, right? Like everything has a different process that it's got to go through. Rarely in the beginning and rarely through the entire existence of whatever it may be is it smooth sailing and easy. You got to get dirty in order to grow. You got to have hardships in order to grow. But what happens as you're growing and you're working through the dirt and you're bouncing off this other root and you're bouncing off this rock that just tumbled right on top of you when they were putting you back in the ground and you're working through this manure and you're working through this dog that just pissed on top of you and you're working through all these different things, eventually, you're going to bust up out of the ground and there's the sun and now it's game on and everybody starts to see this beautiful plant just growing and they see this flower blooming and how beautiful this flower is. How lucky that this gets to be this gorgeous, beautiful flower, but nobody wants to think about literally all the shit that that plant had to go through or that flower had to go through to get to the point where it could show itself to you. And how wonderful is it that we get to see all of these beautiful things? And if they weren't willing to go through what they had to go through, we would never have the opportunity to see any of it. I believe God's with us in all of these processes. I believe Years and years and years ago, when we lost everything, when we went through that bankruptcy, when we moved back into the house with my ma and Steve, and, you know, some of the most humbling things that have ever happened to me in my life, I could have just quit on everything. Everything. I could have quit on everything. And I thought about quitting on everything several times back then. Like, it it's messed up. 
it was messed up. It was bad. And I was scared and I was embarrassed and it, it was sickening to me. And there were two routes to go. Then I could be embarrassed. I could, I could worry about what people thought of me. I could worry about, you know, my reputation. I could worry about all those things. Or I could learn from it. And I could figure out what lessons can I extract from this? Why did this happen? Why did I come from nothing, have something, lose everything super quick? Why, why would that have all happened just for me to actually go backwards for my family? Doesn't make any sense. And the easy thing to do for me, I could have just ended it. Don't have to worry about it. That was a thought. That was a thought back then. That's how broken that I was. That's how much value I put in the thoughts and beliefs of other people about my life. That's how much I concerned myself with where I stacked up with everyone else. You never win that game. And it was torture for me. And I thought about it multiple times. I thought about it. Ending it. I thought about Devin being better off. I thought about my kids being better off. You know, what kind of father, what kind of husband takes them through what I had just taken them through. And it, that could have been it. The thing that was so messed up back then was that as, as sick as I was with how much I disappointed them, there was still a part of me that was so hung up equally as concerned with how everybody else saw me and what they thought of me. And there should be no comparison in that. There should be no compare. Like <laughs> the, the way I let down my family was equally as upsetting to me as the thoughts about me of people who I don't even know who don't, who, who don't matter. We don't care about. And in my lowest of lows, something inside of me, screaming at me, says, go to church. Because I was not a Christ follower. I was not a church goer. I, I was none of those things. Devin grew up in the church. We got married in the church because that was important to her, but it was not a thing for me. And something said, go to church. And it was absolutely my lowest day. I got dressed. I got in the car. And Devin's like, what are you doing Sunday morning? Because she'd been begging. Hey, let's go to church. Let's, let's do this. You want to go to church? And I'm like, nah, shit's for the week. It's a crutch. People didn't handle their own stuff. It's a crutch. It's a, cr it's a crutch. I don't need a crutch. People just need to take care of their own stuff. So she's like, let me get dressed. Let me grab the kids. I was like, no, 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 no. I just need to go. I don't even know where I'm going. I'm just going to go by myself. I drove down the road, and there's this cargo trailer sitting on the side of Magruder Boulevard in front of the YMCA, and I roll into the YMCA gym to Water's Edge Church. And um, there are hundreds of people there in these terrible-ass chairs, horrible chairs, people dressed in shorts, people in jeans, T-shirts, tank tops, whatever. I come in there, man. You, know, you should have seen me. I was a sight. I had on slacks, had on the nice shoes. Dress for Easter. Oh, bro, worse. <laughs> I had on the um, the camel hair, long, like, trench coat, okay? Looking straight off Wall Street. It was messed up. Got to look good for Jesus. Oh, bro, what a joke. So I roll in there looking like that, and immediately I'm like, oh, okay, this is a different type of um, vibe. 
But I was greeted by a, a buddy of mine, Charlie. We kept our boats next to each other back in the day. Took me through, showed me around, welcomed me, got me inside, sat me down. And, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of that room. I was trying to sit in the back. That wasn't an option. I end up like dead center of that auditorium. And, you know, we're, we're sitting there and this band comes out, they're singing. Um, I think back then Rob Shepard was doing like welcomes and, and introductions and stuff. And of course Stu and, you know, I'm sitting there and everybody's standing up and singing and doing different things. I'm listening to this music. It's so weird from the start of the music. Like there's nobody else in that room. Nobody in that gym, but me. It was such a weird feeling, particularly for a person who's always concerned themselves with the thoughts of others. All right. Nobody else in there. I didn't sing a word. I listened to every word, never sang a word though. And that music was crushing me. The words of those songs were crushing me. And the band goes through several sets, several songs. You know, they wrap up. Stu comes out, starts preaching. And to this day, I cannot tell you what he was preaching about, what the message was, any of that. All I know, though, is the whole time I'm just like cold sweats. And listen to this message. And again, feeling like he's just looking me dead in the eye, Jonathan, and just talking to me. And at the end of that sermon, you know, he did something that just totally blew my mind. He was talking about, you know, different things and issues and struggles, you know, people go through and deal with. And he did the craziest thing to me at the time. It seemed absolutely insane. He said, you know, there, there's people in here, you know, hurt and struggling, whatever. He goes, I, I, I can't fix all these things for you. but I want to pray for you. I want you to know that God, that there is a God that loves you, that wants to have a relationship with you. And I want to pray for you. And in that moment, it was so crazy because I'm like, who the hell is going to like, because he said, hey, I want you to stand up so I can pray over you. And I'm like, what kind of fool is going to stand up in front of all these people? Like, talk about, like, attention seeker, drama queen. Like, what what, what are we doing? And, he, <laughs> you know, it, it's going on and on and on. And I'm thinking all these things. Like, why would anybody do that? That's so ridiculous. Well, I find as I'm thinking this, I'm standing up in that auditorium as I'm processing. Who would do this? Why would you do this? But I stood up. And I can't tell you if anybody was standing up in front of me. I can't tell you if anybody's standing up behind me. I was just me. It, like I said, to me, it felt like I was just me in the middle of that 400 seat, you know, auditorium or gymnasium. And he prayed over us. And I cried, man, I cried. It was the first time in so long that, um, And what felt like so long, somebody was just trying to look out for me and nothing in return was required. Didn't need something, didn't want something, didn't expect something. Wasn't just around me because of what I could provide or do. Because I used to have a big crew, people always around. But when things went sideways, there was damn near nobody around. It was a small, small group. And within that small group, I had heard a lot of them. There's still that small group that stuck with me. But everybody that I thought cared about me, that I was concerning myself with, gone. Because the fun stopped. The resources stopped. They went away. It wasn't a relationship with me. It was a relationship with what I could provide. Right? So I'm sitting there and I'm just crying as he prays over us. 
And um, as quickly as it started, it all ended. And I was shook. I remember just walking out of there like my mind was just blown. I'd never had an experience like that in my life. Um, I get home, you know, and Devin, of course, you know, it's like her husband, who she's always wanted to go to church, actually went to church. <laughs> so she's wanting to talk about it. Hey, how was it? I was like, I can't, e- I can't even talk about it. I think I actually went home and went to bed. Like I was so emotionally and mentally just drained and wrecked. That night I spoke a little bit about it with her. The next day I spoke about it with her and and my mom. And the next week, Devin and the kids went with me. And, you know, that (laughs) was so crazy. Um, Because Devin, again, grew up in church, right? Very traditional church. Water's Edge is not your traditional uh, setting. Fairly mainstream now with how a lot of churches are. But back then, it, it was very unique in this area. So it took Devin a little bit to get on board, but what she started to see was a change in me. And so she committed to, to, Hey, I'm going here. We're going to bring the kids here. We're going to, we're going to do this because my attitude started to change. My confidence started to come back a little bit. I started to see myself in a different way. And I started to view all the things that we went through within a total different lens. And it went from, Being my greatest failure and greatest disappointment to me considering not existing on this earth anymore and being a father and a husband and a son to looking at and reframing that and seeing it as the greatest setup ever for my life and what was to come. There are so many things over the last 12 to 14 years. Gosh, now, I mean, we're talking about 13 years, a little over 13 years now when all that went down. There's so much that has happened in our life since then, good and bad. Never, as bad as the bad days have been, never have I ever felt or thought that way again. And we've had bad times. We've had dark times. And when I started to feel real bad and real down, rather than thinking like I did back in the day, I can just deal with it myself and handle it. Talk to somebody about it. Got help. Brain starts messing with me. I'm going to go to the brain doctor. Brain doctor is going to do some work on me. We're going to do all right, therapy. It's fine. There ain't nothing wrong with it. I think last year on the show, we talked a little bit about it. And, you know, I said, the hell am I going to do? Go work on my car? If my car is messed up, I sure as hell cannot do anything with my car. If something's going wrong with my mental, <laughs> well, <laughs> if I can't put oil in my car, I surely can't fix <laughs> Everything that's going on, you know, with my brain. I'm not a heart surgeon either. They tell me I got heart issues. I'm not going to try to knock this out myself. I'm going to go to the, the, the best, right? You want to bring in the champ. You got to get your car worked on. I want the best to work on my car. If I get my mental health worked on, I want the, the best to help me with that. 99% of the time for me, when I go to God, have my conversations with God, That's all I need. But I also don't ignore. It's like, well, why wasn't God there for you then? He was there for me then. I look back now to all the years leading up to the craziness 13 years ago. And I can see all the moments where God, even though I wasn't a believer, where he was in my life saying, hey, bro. Why, why don't we go right here and stay instead of left? And I'm hard left. Hey, man, why don't we put an end to that relationship that does not serve you? It is not for you. It is in a not alignment with your purpose and the goals for your life that you have and I have. 
This individual is not in alignment with you. And what do I do? Hey, man, you want to go get a beer? Hey, man, come on. Yeah, I'll help you out with that. No problem. Yeah, I got you. Just put it on me. Hey, Josh, I don't really think that's the individual we get in business with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. All God's sitting there screaming at me. There's all these signs. There's there's a a, a story that goes around social media from time to time. And the guy's talking about their boat like sinks. And they got like their little life raft they're on out in the middle of the ocean, right? And um they're floating along. And this boat comes by with fishermen. And they're like, hey man, get in. We'll help you out. We'll get you squared away. And he says, no, 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 no. My God will save me. My God will not let me perish here. They're like, man, come on, get in the boat. My God has me. The boat goes on. Maybe God sent the boat. Maybe that tingle on the back of your neck that causes you to turn your head to the right and you slam on your brakes right before that car runs that red light. Man, I was lucky there. Maybe that was God smacking you on the back of the neck, getting you to look. We can't say God didn't show up in our life when we're just deciding to not read the signs. Doesn't work that way. You got to go through the shit in order to see the sun shine. The conditions are not always going to be perfect and they shouldn't be. The lessons are in the garbage. (laughs) The lessons are in the struggles. The lessons are in the pain. Learn far more from my problems every day than I learn from my wins every day. Doesn't mean you got to enjoy the problems. But you got to get your mind right where you can extract the lesson from the problems. You've got to get your mind right where you realize and understand, I don't need to compare myself to anybody else. If I try to be someone else, I will never be happy. I will never be successful, whatever you may define success to be. Because here's the thing, you... You want to be the best. You're already the best you that you can be. Like nobody else can be best you. I, you shouldn't be nervous going into rooms to meet somebody because no one's better at being you than you. Go be you. Don't worry about trying to be somebody else and know that all the shit that you've already come up through has prepared you for whatever moment that you're going into. I know I'm talking to somebody. Somebody is tracking with me this morning and understanding what I'm talking about. And a lot of this this morning, as several of these shows have been lately, is me talking to me and getting my mind right. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. Right? And so don't don't cop out because stuff's hard. Don't cop out because something's scary. Don't discount God and his presence in your life and say, oh, well, you know, he doesn't show up for them or, you know, my, my mother's sick. You know, my brother died at 20 some odd years old. I don't have a relationship with so-and-so anymore. Where was God when I was going through all these things? Where was God when I couldn't find a job? Where was God when my wife cheated on me? Where was God when my kids left and they don't talk to me anymore? Where was God? He was there. He was there and he's still there. Find the lessons. Extract the lesson. Put it to work. Stop blaming God or whoever else for not being there when you already have everything that you need to get where you need to go. Hope this helps somebody. 
you feel like maybe you got somebody in your life that needs to hear it, share it, um, social media, tag them into post, whatever it may be. We love you. We appreciate you. Jonathan, you got anything for us? Uh, no, I don't. We would just love it if you would watch on YouTube and like and comment on there as well. Yeah, I always forget to mention YouTube. Helps the podcast be seen. Yeah, it does, you know, because YouTube's nothing but a big old search engine. Yep. So Second largest in know. the world. Yeah, it is. So it's great. So we appreciate y'all. Um, all right. I'm going to go hug my wife. I <laughs> love y'all. Later. <laughs>